So Odin on drop off day was out of control and dragging anyone holding a leash. How do you get a dog so out of tune from that point to this point? Well, we use the e-collar to train up every dog here. It's a beautiful tool that allows us to communicate with the dog, give them information, and later on in the training, hold them accountable with corrections. So the first thing we concern ourselves with is not getting a beautiful heel, okay? I know he's pulling, I know he's doing all these silly things, but I need to have him understand the tool that I'm using. The first thing we do is we teach him about stimulation on the e car How we do this is through what we call pressure and release, which pretty much essentially means when I turn stimulation on here, which is the pressure, he needs to learn how to release it, right? And the, the idea is that he releases this pressure when he yields to the guidance I give him on the leash, okay? So, this doesn't seem like much, but it is very much the foundation to everything we do in this program. Once we teach a dog to turn this pressure up on the e-collar to yield to the direction we're giving them on the leash, we can start shaping anything we want. We can start shaping a recall, we can start shaping a heel, we can start shaping a down, a sit, a place, all using our leash as direction and our e-collar as the motivation to turn off the pressure, okay? So, how we start with every dog generally is with letting the dog go out in front of us, which is really no problem because they're pulling anyway, turning e-collar pressure on to a level that they care about turning off but isn't freaking them out, and then guiding them towards us with the leash. And as soon as they turn and commit to come towards us, e-collar pressure turns off. I start praising them. They come to me, they realize that's that coming to me turned off the sensation. Step one, I do that over and over and over again to the point where literally just turning this on for a millisecond, almost like a tap, they turn right around and come to me. So now they understand it's me communicating with them and there's a way to turn it off and they're in control of that, okay? So it looks like this. Break. We let him, he might not actually go out in front of me now. But we would let him go out in front of us and he's not going to. <laughs> So, that's how well this works. And if he did, I would turn on the pressure and then he would, he, I would guide him with the leash back to me and as soon as he started coming back to me, I'd turn it off. Okay, we got that. And what you end up getting within a few minutes is you get a dog who's hanging around, who's hanging around about a foot from you. He's somewhere around the heel position because they know if they go out too far at the end of the leash, you're gonna turn on the sensation and guide them back. Okay? So, then you get a dog who's hanging out here in this area. Not a perfect heel, but following you. When you turn, they're following you, right? So now to get the heel, we're using the same principle, pressure and release. I need to show him that being right here is where I want him to be. So logically, that tells me that if he's out of position, if I turn this pressure on, guide him to this spot, and then release the pressure, it's very clear to him, this is where I want him to be. Or, or rather, this is where the pressure turns off. That's the, that's the beginning stages, okay? So a dog who doesn't know heel, I would create space if they weren't already creating space themselves, turn the heat collar pressure on, and guide them to my leg, and turn it off. See, he knows, and that's a level four, which is really low. He knows that when he feels that, come here because I've guided him multiple times. <clears throat> so what you get after you do about 20 reps or so, I don't know, every dog is different, but it doesn't take a whole lot, is you get a dog who understands when they feel this pressure on the walk, to put themselves right here. Okay? So that's how I got Odin when I turned this on. Okay. Better yet, he, he tries to stay here so that the pressure doesn't turn on. Okay. So now I can. So now I don't just turn it on every time I move away. 
Now he's following me, okay? And if I ever feel like he's getting too far out of position, he has the education now that I can just tap on this button and you'll see him close the gap, right? So if I tap on the button, he puts himself here. I taught him that, okay? Using this beautiful principle of pressure and release, okay? Sit. So now I can hold him accountable. So now if he goes out, the first step is I taught him how to get into position. Now I need to teach him not to go out of position. And that's step two. So I take the first session on the heel to teach them when you feel low level pressure. Low level meaning a, a number that's not too concerning to them, but they do feel it. And they do prioritize turning it off. So I can guide them here. Good, we got that. Our dog knows it, but he immediately goes back out. That's okay in the teaching process because it gives us reps. But now we're like, okay, now this is annoying. He's still going out and coming back in and then going back out. Now we need to set the boundary saying, I don't want you, once I ask you to go into heel, I don't want you to break the boundary. And how I do that is a firmer correction on the e-collar, very much like place. Once you teach a dog place and you want them to learn not to go off from the bed, then you start introducing, introducing firmer corrections for when they try to break the command. So we don't automatically go to a really, really firm, firm correction. We go just mildly firmer to start introducing what to do with slightly higher pressure that's more consequential, right? Because the dog still, they might know what to do with this low pressure, but high pressure is a different story. So we, there's a little bit of a middle game where we teach them what to do with slightly higher pressure. And what that looks like is letting the dog go back out by having the pressure slightly higher, guiding them back. The next step is teaching the dog not to leave the heel position once you, add, once you get him there. And that is with a bit of a firmer level on the e-collar. Sit. Sit. Good. Even right there, I can hold him accountable for a sit. So what I will do is I'll set the dog up. You guys hear us talk about this all the time, setting the dog up to make the mistake so that we can have the conversation of saying, that's a mistake. So what it looks like is walking, 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 getting the dog to make the mistake by going out in front of you, correcting a little firmer on the e-collar now, and then guiding with the leash back to position, okay? We're going to a correction that is mildly uncomfortable for the dog. We're not going extremely firm at this point. We want to teach them what to do with, with a correction, a mild correction. So if he's working at a four, a mild correction for him might be like a 10, okay? Or, or, or 15, depending on the dog. Don't take these numbers and think that this is how your dog's gonna work. Every dog's different. For him, if I hit this four, see that right there? That little head twitch? He feels it, that's how I'd start, with a number like that. But to set the boundary, that's not gonna work. It has to be firmer, okay? So, heel. So what I do is I set them up at different angles. I want, to, I want them to learn what to do when they're out in front of me and they feel it, what to do when they're behind me and they feel it, and what to do when they're out to the side. So the first one I cover usually is when they're out in front. So they go out in front, say he keeps walking, I hit that higher level and I turn this way and I give them guidance back to my leg, okay? And then he might go back out that way. I hit that firmer level, a little pop, guidance back to my leg. What you see three or four times down the road is you turn and the dog just does that with you. And he doesn't cross right here because the, the pressure turns on as soon as he starts going out past your leg. It's almost like an electric fence, right? As soon as he goes out here and he can't see your leg anymore, pressure turns on, I turn around, guide. That's one move that we do to set that boundary. The other move is the sidestep to teach them when they start veering that way. I'll turn the pressure on, guide to the leg, right? And I keep setting it up. I don't wait for the dog to do it. So I'll take a side step, turn it on, guide him in. He knows what he's doing, so he's running to it. But your dog in the beginning, he might be looking over there and you take a side step, he doesn't see. You turn on the e-collar pressure, a little pop will guide him into, your, into the direction that you want him to go in. And the pressure turns off when he's here. Okay, if the dog's lagging, pressure on, he gets there, pressure off. 10 to 15 minutes of this and the dog realizes right here is the sweet spot. It does not take long to teach a dog this. And the cool part about doing it this way 
we're not relying on a leash. Okay, so usually at the end of the first or second session, we, we don't actually really need the leash. The dog is reliant on this pressure. So that transfers to off-leash stuff very, very nicely. We're not taking a dog, wrapping up really short and starting heel like this. We're not doing that, because that doesn't teach the dog how to get into position when he makes a mistake. That, that, just, that just keeps him here, okay? We start, when I start, the leash is actually quite long. Go ahead, go out to all these places. I'll show you how to turn off the, the pressure by coming back here. Once he's got that, then I tighten up the leash and start holding him accountable for staying there, okay? Heel. After the dog starts to understand these things, it's very much, I'm not using words at this point. It's just pressure and release at this point to shape it. Once the dog, once the, under, the dog understands that I want him right here, then I'll start adding the word heel, okay? Then I'll start adding the word right before I turn on the e-collar pressure. So if I step out like this and he's not coming with me, heel, then e-collar pressure, then guidance. Heel, e-collar pressure, guidance. And I'll do that over and over again in that order because what happens is you'll say heel and you don't, they, they beat you to put in, they beat you to the punch. You don't even get a chance to put the e-collar pressure on or to guide them. They know where to be. So now the dog understands heel means to be here. And that takes about a session, okay? And then, so, if your dog isn't listening, hold them accountable here. They have the training once they feel this and they say, oh crap, that sensation's on. I wanna turn it off because it's a bit more corrective. What do they do? Right here. Do this, put this on repeat for like a week and you get dogs who when they're walking with you, you don't even ask them to do it. They put themselves right here and they just start following, okay? That's the basic concept. There are, there are some troubleshooting things you're gonna have to figure out, you know? There's, there's some finesse to all of this, but that's the basic idea is pressure on, pressure off when you're here. That's how we teach heel, okay?